Hey everyone and welcome to another tutorial video for EVE Echoes. Today we're going to be talking about fitting your ships. This is not going to be any level of expert advice, this is going to be advice for those of you who have just come into the game and don't really know what you're doing. So without further ado, let's get on with the video shall we? So first things first, if you go into the fitting screen, which you can access from the menu button on the top left in tapping fittings, you access the fitting screen for the ship that you're currently occupying. Now across the top row, you have your high slots as you can see at the moment. Your high slots are typically your weapon slots. So in here you'll be putting lasers, missile launchers, railguns, uh, the list goes on. So this will be where you put your weapons. Now in the event that you're flying a logistics ship, which might be a bit further down the road for you, in those cases you'll be equipping your healing options as it were, your armour repairers or shield repairers. But don't worry about that for now, your high slots are going to be your weapons. Now next up we have the mid slots. Now in the mid slots you're typically going to find that you're using support modules. So these could be um, in the form of electronic warfare, for example stasis webifiers, warp disruptors, energy neutralizers or Nosferatus, the list goes on. Those are your different forms of electronic warfare and they kind of help determine your gameplay as it were. Now you can also equip in here uh, group support modules which tend to be your group armor repairers, group shield boosters, group capacitor modules, uh, shield field bubbles, anything that affects a group that is the group that you're fleeted up with, also tends to go in the mid slots. If you're a solo player, odds are you're going to be equipping uh, a combination of stasis webifiers, warp disruptors and energy neutralizers, depending on which sort of uh, gameplay it is you're going for. If it's PvE, of course it'll be energy Nosferatus, but that is a topic for another discussion, or another video, sorry. Moving on to the low slots, this is where things get a bit more complicated and this is where you'll be finding yourself making more sacrifices when it comes to uh, picking and choosing what you want. First and foremost we have the propulsion modules. Now these can be your afterburners or micro warp drives that make you go faster. It could be your warp core stabilizers that make it harder for people to pin you down. Or it could be your inertial stabilizers to make yourself maneuver faster. Uh, as, or on top of that you also have the cloaking device which also badly affects your propulsion whilst you are using it. You also have your tanking modules, so your armor repairer, your um, armor hardener, shield hardener, shield booster, the list goes on. Um, lastly we also have your weapon modules such as tracking computers or heat sinks as we can see up on screen at the moment. So these are for boosting your weapons, making them e easier to apply damage and increasing the amount of damage that they do. So your low slots are pretty important because with them you are determining how fast your ship goes, how much uh, armor or shields, basically how much health your ship has, maybe how easily you can recover health and also how much damage and how well you deal it. There's a lot of choices to make in the low slots and they are arguably the most important area, of course assuming that you've already fitted your weapons. Now you'll, you'll also notice that we have along the bottom right of our fittings menu a yellow semicircle, it's more like a quarter of a circle. So if we hold tap on there we get the power grid. Now. Every single module that you equip to your ship uses up a specific amount of power grid. Let's have a look at a weapon for an example. So this weapon that I've just pulled up, the Mark 9 medium pulse laser, uses up a total of 80.41 meg megawatts. I was going to say megahertz then, where did that come from? So of course if you try to fit modules that are too big for your ship, you're not going to have the power grid and the game will just tell you off and say you cannot use this. If you manage to glitch your way into equipping a module that exceeds your power grid, 
the game just won't let you undock with it. You've just got to remove it before you can do anything. But the power grid is nice and simple and a bit early on in the game, it's not something you're going to uh, encounter problems with uh, particularly much. Further down the line though, if you want to get more creative and experimental with your fittings and fit modules that are way much bigger than your ship should be taking, you'll be finding yourself interacting with the power grid that bit more and fine tuning things. But for now, just keep an eye on it, but it shouldn't be anything you need to particularly worry about. Moving on, of course, we have the rigs, which you can access by clicking on the spanner at the bottom of the screen. In here, you have your engineering rigs on the right and your combat rigs on the left. Your engineering rigs can be anything from uh, propulsion related to capacitor or power grid or even sensors for targeting. Um, yeah, there's a lot of choice in that one and going along to combat, you have your rigs that help you determine uh, the properties of your weapons or the properties of your tank, that is your health. It is highly advised that you put in some rigs, however cheap they may be, because they will vastly improve your ship. Me personally, as an example, on this Omen Modified, I have two capacitor control circuits Mark 1s and two laser rigs, both of which are laser collision accelerator 2s. Now, of course, the capacitor control circuit, because the, the collision accelerators are damage bonuses. They just give you a bonus to the damage of your weapons. But as we have not mentioned the capacitor yet, let's talk about the capacitor control circuits. Another thing you'll notice on your fitting screen, on the right hand side, you've got capacitor, which for me currently says stable. Now, every module that you activate, with a few exceptions, uses power grid, not power grid, capacitor. Some will use a form of fuel that you have to put into your ship, but for the most part, it will use capacitor. And every module has a different capacitor usage. Now, when you're out in space, your capacitor only recharges so fast. And if you use up too much capacitor, your ship shuts down. So when it comes to PVE related ships, that is you going and clearing a room of computer generated enemies, you want to make sure that you are cap stable the entire time. If you are not stable, the odds are you're going to run out of capacitor, get pinned down by the NPCs and unfortunately lose your ship. So that's capacitor nice and quickly covered. We, of course, have our offence statistics, which are always at the very top when you first open the screen, um, big and bold, because everyone likes the big DPS numbers. We have defence, which we can toggle through armour, shields and structure. We have targeting, which gives us our scan resolution. The scan resolution determines how quickly we can lock on to different targets. And we have navigation, which tells us how fast we can go at this current point in time. Now, of course, there are a few things that have missed out. We do have indeed drone bays. Think of these as your little fighters. Imagine in, say, Stargate, you had your fighters on board the Daedalus, or you had, oh, what was it? What were the gold fighters on the uh, Hatak ships? Can't remember what they're called. So feel free to remind me in the comments below. So this is where you have your smaller craft. Now, of course, drones are worthy of an entire video in of themselves because of all of the stuff they've received recently. But as a rule of thumb, use the drone size that corresponds with the size of your ship's class. So if you're using a small ship, you're stuck with small drones. If you're using medium, use medium drones. If you have a large ship, like a battleship, you can use large drones. Any ship can use drones that are smaller than its current class. So this omen modified which is a medium sized ship can use small and medium drones um, until recently drones were exclusively for combat purposes however there are a few more uses for them in game which i'm not going to mention here so that's the drones covered next up we have two more buttons on the bottom left of the screen the first button which is a uh, square that's kind of shaped like a box is for nano cores now, odds are, as a new player, you probably don't have a nanocore yet. 
but at some point you will get one most likely from an option box that you get as a login reward maybe or through the concord pass whatever the case will be eventually you will get nano cores we're not going to cover them too detailed here we're just going to go through a quick example now this omen modified only has one nano core related to it the omen comet core and if we were to equip one right now assuming that i had one on uh, my person i would be able to choose between three different statistic bonuses it also allows you to customize your ship's skin as well so of course you can choose one of these three bonuses purple cores like this can also be further upgraded to provide more customized bonuses but we're getting ahead of ourselves and the last uh, part of the ship fitting which technically isn't a part of the ship fitting but it's a way for you to further customize your ship and that is skins which you'll be familiar with from other games with skins here we have four different options now of course i don't actually own any of the skins to be able to permanently equip them at this point in time you can earn them through either purchasing them or acquiring them through gameplay it, this story is the same with most games i presume but that is fittings quickly covered is there anything that i missed feel free to ask in the questions below and thanks again for watching feel free to hit that subscribe button if you want to see more uh, content to help you get started in this game and see you guys in the next video.